Greetings and good day from Calvary, Melbourne. I hope you're all doing great. Uh, yes, it's another week of a podcast instead of a video uh, message uh, because I'm traveling and I'm currently in Los Angeles at the moment. Uh, and so if you hear a plane flying over, it's because I'm uh, at a location right next to the airport. In fact, the hotel that I'm staying in is directly under the flight path. And so um, I'll be speaking at a church, uh, Calvary Chapel, close by, uh, Calvary Chapel LAX, with a friend of mine. His name's Daniel Hurd. Uh, he's the pastor there. He uh, started the church about 20 years ago, and it's going strong. So we've got three services tomorrow morning, 8, 10, and 12, and God's doing great things up here in Los Angeles, and uh, next week I'll be back in uh, uh, Australia. So uh, so anyways, uh, as we do each week, we talk about some end times news, trends, and prophecy uh, each week as uh, things are lining up uh, for the soon return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and all the pieces of the puzzle are coming together. Each week we do, it seems like, a, a an update of what's happening on the refugees and the uh, invasion, what's happening in Europe, because there's several reasons why. Um, not only is it just making news, for one thing, but secondly, it's because it's a national security issue, it's an economic issue, it's a health issue when it comes down to it. And there's a lot of other things that we can uh, uh, report on these um uh, situations that are developing. Um, but now it's been interesting that some of the countries are catching on and, and uh, they're kind of sick and tired of what has been taking place over this past year. For example, this report came out of the firstpost.com uh, on um, the 29th, January 29th, just a couple of days ago. And uh, it's talking about how the government of Sweden will be departing uh, 80,000 Muslims and Finland is going to be departing um, uh, close to 20,000 Muslim refugees. So it's interesting because a they're not qualifying, but also they're seeing so many problems developing from all these uh, immigrants that are coming in through the doors and taking advantage of the people and of the government. Also, another report that came out of the UK Daily Mail, um, where the former head of the UK Equality and Human Rights Commission, Mr. Uh, Phillips, Trevor Phillips, he said uh, publicly that um, Muslims will never integrate for the simple reason they do not, nor will they ever share the same values as UK citizens, and it uh, was disrespectful to think that they would change. And again, they're not going to change. Their view is they want to dominate, they want Sharia law, and uh, they want everyone to become Muslims, and so if you don't bow down and become a Muslim, they will kill you. And uh, he also added that uh, amongst the many other problems that are surrounding um, the Islamic people and many other issues that are because the ideas of political correctness and the racket of uh, multiculturalism. And if the UK began to address its problems, it will have to be ready to offend people. People don't like uh, when you just flat out tell the truth and tell it like it is. People like the political correctness uh, because it's the old warm and fuzzy and let's embrace everything and anything type goes mentality. But uh, it's a battle of worldviews when it comes down to it. Uh, the Muslims have a different worldview. Uh, the Christians have a different worldview. The government people um, and those in office have a different worldview. And so there's a clash of worldviews, and this is why there's so many problems going on. Also, uh, a former Estonian prime minister mentions that um, uh, some of the problems that are also continue to develop, and, and, and again, she just tells it like it is, and, and uh, her name is Christina or Ordland, or Ordland. And, uh, and what she said in this little video clip as she was being interviewed, she's saying, what we see now since this year is totally different situation compared to uh, what was happening in the previous year and how some of it was not so much of a problem. This last year, 2015, was just a problematic year. And, I said, and she says this, if it's not stopped, the big question 
question will be a political question of Islam and the Islamic invasion. So she flat out tells it it's an Islamic invasion that even many Muslim leaders do not deny this is their aim in the invasion of Europe. So she is very clear of what their goal is. They are very clear, but the political correctness of the mainstream media hides that fact. And we've said this time and again, the Islamic invasion. On another issue, uh, this past week on Wednesday, the 27th, was the International Holocaust uh, Remembrance Day. So it's one of those days we remember all that went through uh, during that period of time, that horrible time in history. But there was a report that came out of the Jerusalem Post last Sunday that was talking about the European anti-Semitism has reached unprecedented levels. And we knew this was going to happen, especially in these end times, how the world is going to come against Israel and the Jewish people, as, as um, Zechariah 12 talks about. And uh, part of the statistic that was given, um, in, they said that it's indicating the anti-Semitic incidents in London arose, and this came out, again, the Jerusalem Post, uh, more than 60% during the last 12-month period and the incidents in France, for example, shot up 84% in the first quarter of 2015 compared to the same period the previous year. So we're starting to see the anti-Semitism uh, rhetoric uh, unprecedented with the levels of hatred toward them. In fact, even German count, uh, Chancellor, uh, this came out of the Israeli National News also on Sunday, and she says that anti-Semitism is more widespread um, than um, in the country than, than some believe, or, and it calls for action. So she's kind of even waking up to this kind of uh, um, spread of hatredism uh, against the Jews. In fact, even just uh, the previous year, there was a number of attacks and things that were going, even uh, um, some protesters waving a Palestinian flags, shouting anti-Semitic um, uh, slogans at rallies against Israeli military action. And during some of these actions and protests, uh, these people are in the crowds claiming, you know, Alu Akbar, which in Arabic is God is great. And they were saying this in Berlin, and they're repeatedly saying death to Israel, and they chanted Zionist as the fascist, uh, fa fascist and the uh, killing uh, children and civilians. So they're they're making up some some things that are just not true, and um, and then in one particular shocking video, thousands of demonstrators can be heard uh, chanting "Jew, Jew, cowardly pig, come on and fight on your own." And on top of that, a Berlin imam. Uh, had openly prayed for the annihilation of the Zionist Jews, uh, asking Allah to kill them uh, to the very last one. So this is really the uh, the agenda of, is of Islam. And uh, so you're going to see more of this anti-Semitism in these last days. You're going to see the attack and even how Canada turned its back on Israel recently. And again, it's the agenda of the prime minister. But we're seeing more and more countries, more and more leaders, more and more people turning its back on Israel and the Jewish people. In fact, even France uh, to uh, recognize the Palestinian state unless deadlock with Israel is broken. This came out of the Yahoo News. And so France will recognize the Palestinian state if a push that Paris plans to lead a two-state solution between Israel and the Palestinians fail, its foreign minister said on Friday. So the U.S. led efforts uh, to broker peace uh, for its two-state solution collapsed in April of 2014, and since then there have been no serious efforts to resume talks. It's not going to work when it comes down to it. Um, and a vote for Palestine is a vote against Israel, as we said time and again, because Palestine wants to wipe Israel off the face of the map. Uh, they want the recognition of the world, uh, but ultimately their plan and Hezbollah and Hamas wants to take out Israel. On to another story. Uh, this one was kind of a, an eye-opener, but uh, not surprising. And this came out of uh, uh, the uh, 
free thought project. Uh, there's others that uh, have reported the same type of uh, information. But the U.S. Senate declare international martial law. Uh, and basically what this does, it's a resolution that uh, gives the president unlimited military powers. So it's going to be interesting how this really plays out, that uh, he can almost do whatever he wants and create even martial law uh, internationally um, by the powers that he has. Um, and again, there's already a lot of powers that the president has because of what took place in 9-11. So the Congress and the Senate, they gave him more powers to um, use uh, force and military power. Uh, and as the New York Times pointed out <clears throat> some time ago, that ISIS was created long after 9-11 and uh, was actually a competitor of al-Qaeda, which means Obama's war, which is going on. And he's really not doing much for ISIS. Uh, he's, um, uh, but it's not uh, justified under the 2001 uh, agenda that uh, was given to President Bush at the time. Um, but a lot of the Congress uh, members uh, have recognized the current military operations have no legal basis. So there's this back and forth between some of the uh, House of Representatives and Senates of uh, how much force and how much power does the president have. Yeah, but basically this new um, resolution gives him a lot more power uh, than any other previous president and, and the future presidents as well. And also when speaking of Al-Qaeda, um, there was talk about ISIS, <coughs> and this came out of the Brett Bart report, uh, that ISIS talks about a merger with Al-Qaeda and the Muslim Brotherhood. So we don't know how far they're really going to go with this, but uh, it's interesting to see the agenda, the force that uh, this uh, crazy Islamic um, group is going to do. On to another issue, which takes place this year, the Olympics. But there was a report that came out, <clears throat> this one came out of The Guardian last Sunday, that the International Olympic Committee uh, rules gender, transgender athletes can participate in the Olympics without surgery. So the female to male athletes can compete without restriction, while the male to female athletes must undergo hormone therapy according to new guidelines. Transgender athletes should also be allowed to compete in the Olympics and other international events without undergoing sex reassignment surgery. And, and many have uh, seen the problems with that. John Hopkins, who was the first um, hospital to uh, do those sort of things, uh, have realized the implications and the disaster that, that happens uh, with that type of surgery. So they've stopped that altogether. Uh, but anyways... The International Olympic Committee medical officials said Sunday that they changed the policy to adapt to the current scientific, social, and legal attitudes on transgender issues. So these guidelines are designed as recommendations, not rules or regulations for international sport federations uh, and other bodies to follow that should apply to this year's Olympics in Rio de Janeiro. So you're starting to see this transgender issue becoming so much more of a problem, especially because it's really not fair to compete against these other uh, athletes that um, maybe in the female uh, category were once males before. Now they're trying to pretend that they're females. And of course, there are certain guidelines that they do have and how they uh, have to be kind of uh, in this kind of program um, and uh, <clears throat> for about a year or so before uh, they can compete. So there's certain levels within their um, uh, blood uh, with the hormonal you know, drugs that they have to have uh, before they do compete. So um, it's, it's crazy to see. And this, a lot of this came out um, back in 2009. Where there was a uh, and, and it got global attention after the South African runner uh, that was ordered to undergo some sex tests after winning the 800 meter uh, world title in 2009, and she was eventually cleared to compete in the uh, the uh, international um, um, competition. She won silver in the um, 800 in the 2012 London Olympics. Uh, and the International Olympic Committee also used the 
uh, to conduct a gender uh, verification test at the Olympics. So this is kind of what they're starting to do. So now they're trying to accept the transgender, and so there's some verification tests. But those chromosomes-based screenings were dropped before the 2000 Sydney Games because they were deemed unscientific and unethical. So since then, there have been more tests to, to show about the, the sex of the athletes as well, plus the drug testing as well. Uh, on a similar issue, this came out of the Daily Mail, how children as young as 13 on some of their uh, forms are asked whether they are gender fluid or demigirl or intersex, and officials have uh, surveyed pupils to pick from a list of 25 genders. So just like it says in the days of Lot, is going to be like in these last days, uh, the immorality uh, off the charts. And so you're starting to see how confused so many people are. And it's it's not that confusing. Either you're a boy or you're a girl, you know, and uh, this is the way God created us. And then lastly, because we're going to see a rise within Satanism. But this last one was quite interesting. This came out of Fox News on January 29th. And it was about the satanic group set to lead the Phoenix City Council in prayer. It's It just does your head in. It's like, are you serious? Did I read that correctly? Well, here's the report. Satanic group set to deliver an opening prayer at the upcoming meeting in the Phoenix City Council, sparking controversy. So the local satanic temple will deliver the invocation at the council uh, on February 17th, after winning approval, and at least one councilman calling it a joke, according to Fox 10 reported on Thursday. And he said this, that it's, well, definitely it's going to be making a mockery of everything. They want to mock the city of Phoenix, the taxpayers, the people who want to take the stuff seriously, the councilman said. The attorney for the city of Phoenix uh, defended the decision, saying it's consistent with the U.S. Supreme Court's direction, the city cannot dictate religious viewpoints or the content of a prayer. Uh, he also said that in addition to government may not include or exclude, sorry, a denomination or a religion from praying under these circumstances. In fact, the Phoenix mayor, Greg Stanton, uh, support letting the Satanists deliver the invocation, saying that the Constitution demands equal treatment under law, according to the Arizona um, Constitution. So one of the Satanists who refused to tell the paper who uh, that the group was planning for the invocation, and he says, we don't intend to do anything offensive, end quote. But we're going to see an increase of the satanic agenda as we're starting to see across the board, around the world, with the government, uh, the lies, the deception. And as Christians, we need to be alert. We need to be on guard. We need to put the full armor of God on. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus. We need to be in the Word and stay in the Word. We need to always be watchful uh, and ready, and even to be praying for these people, uh, that they uh, would turn from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive the forgiveness of sins. So, this is uh, what is taking place this last week. Uh, there's so many other things that we can report on from the uh, natural disasters, the amount of earthquakes that are going on, uh, volcanoes erupting, um, the moral issues, the religious issues of the day, and the list goes on and on. But uh, each week we report on some of the highlighted news. There's so many other things out there. And um, so, again, this is uh, uh, another weekly update. Looking forward to what uh, this next week holds and uh, looking forward to being back uh, with the church in Melbourne. Uh, and uh, so uh, we'll be doing the podcast or the uh, uh, weekly updates as normal. So thank you for your patience uh, with me and may the Lord radically and outrageously bless you.